We appreciate the opportunity uh, once again to visit on this topic and kind of continue the conversation we started this morning. I don't know how many of you were here. We, the first session we talked about gathering cattle, but that kind of sets up what leads into the next part in the processing of cattle. We're very fortunate this year that we've got some setups where we can demonstrate different types of uh, processing areas. And it's pretty unique also standpoint we have the overhead cameras where you can see the perspective on the cattle as they're coming through. They'll be able to show that on the screen as well. And so you'll be able to see what's going on here, but also kind of monitor what's happening uh, from the screen, which is really unique to what we've been able to do in the past. We've got a setup here that uh, some of you may have used a bud box or understand know what a bud box is, and there's a whole bunch of different designs on bud boxes and types of bud boxes, but they all basically work off the same principle. I think, once again, they're probably falling into that area we're trying to over-engineer them, and rather than learn how to work uh, the, the box, I don't think it's all about how it's laid out or designed necessarily, as much as it ha is how you work that uh, particular facility and part of the facility. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, we also have a sweep system here, and it's a little bit unique. There's not very many of these on the market. It is, uh, I guess if you would talk, call it a tug, you could, but it really is a sweep. It's a 135 degree sweep. Uh, Prefort um, has this, had this one for a long time, and I don't think there's some other companies, but this is one we've been able to use and demonstrate, and it works really, really good. If you look at the sweep system that Dr. Grandin designed, they're a 270 degree sweep. And the unique thing about them is that they actually bring cattle around the pivot post and back out, and the funnel comes down actually about 10 or to 16 feet from where they actually entered or went around that uh, pivot post. This one's unique because the cattle come right around the pivot post and come right back out. It actually works as well as any small sweep system that I've ever seen. Uh, the other ones all have a little different aspect of how you work a sweep. There's 180 degrees, 90 degree sweeps, and all of them present some unique challenges, and we'll try to talk about them even though we don't have them set up here. And then down on the far end, we've set up what we call an old V-shaped uh, forcing pen. Uh, they're all over the country. We have a lot of them in Texas, and I always liken them to uh, getting cattle out of them. Everybody put cattle in there and they squeeze on the back of them until something finally squirt out the front. That's not necessarily the best way to work them, so we want to talk about how to, to use one of those and actually get the cattle to flow through it without creating that push uh, from behind. And if you'll notice as we go through that, there's something very common about all of these. It's about creating draw and flow of cattle coming out of these uh, processing areas. It's not about forcing them through there. And we, I see a lot of people that take a bud box and then they put a gate in it to try to force the cattle around and they don't just don't know how to use the bud box properly, in my opinion, uh, to make it work without the gate. The gate's dangerous inside a bud box. And so you need to keep that in mind, at least in my opinion, and what I've seen, uh, I don't know how to do that. But there's a lot of them going in like that. So we'll talk about how to make them work without that. Part of that is getting the cattle ready to work and the, we talked about this more, whether it be moving cattle from pen to pen or paddock to paddock or whatever it might be, we have a chance to teach those cattle to come by us and flow by us very easily. And so with that part of it, this makes it pretty easy to get the cattle to come in here and flow back out of it. The 35, they go past it and they flow back into the, the race leading up to the chute. The triangle down there is a little different, or the forcing pen, so we'll talk about it a little bit more as well. Uh, we'll also, this is the only one where we have a chute set up on it, so we'll actually demonstrate what we talk about on the flow in these cattle and getting them to use the draw of the animal in front to help bring the next one in. And I see a lot of operations where they have to hot shot a lot of cattle onto the chute, and a part of that is just the mechanism by which you do that uh, and the mechanics of operating a chute. So you kind of need a chute, you've got two people to work at, or you've got somebody that can run the back and somebody that can run the front, and they're in sync in doing that. So we'll try to demonstrate that as well. Have these cows even been through this one? We want to uh, talk about that aspect. I, I believe we put three through earlier, and then I think they were all through on Tuesday night. Okay. With Dean and Dr. Graham. All right. The, 
next thing is to get the cattle up and get them moving. These are laying around resting right now. As Kurt's doing that, he can just take his time to get them up. You don't want to run. I see people walk into the pen to get start ready processing cattle, and they just basically run them over the top of one another. You need to show them enough respect, in my opinion, to let them have a chance to get up and get to moving and go where they need to go. And all I'm going to do here is try to work the side of Kirk going back and forth across the back. is going to create that flow forward, and then I can help him by not messing it up is the main thing. So I'll keep a little pressure on this side. He won't have to make quite as big a... Well, but I just don't want him to curl out here. He could do this by himself, but since I'm here, I might as well help. I can send this old heifer up a little faster. And you, you can always take too much pressure off on cattle going into a processing area. And if you do, sometimes you lose your motion. I was afraid to step up too quick because that little heifer there was thinking about backing up. Well, the quicker they come around here and the more fluid you have, the better off you get grab that gate for me. Right. Now in the bud box you do have to be a little bit careful about how many you bring at one time and we, we don't talk about normally the general rule is don't put any more in here then we'll fit in your lead up but we all know there can be exceptions to that as well. Now they Kurt this is too many really to get in there and work and get the flow to come out very easily because he's got to have room to get them to come around you want me to start them, Kurt? You yeah, please. Okay. I'm, I'm cheating here, really. This little horse right here doesn't like walking in the cattle. Uh, so I'm going to just take a little bit of... And this is a good time. If you've got any time to train cattle to come into your box and back out, it helps. Now, normally in an alley, I'd switch sides. Yep. But being as I'm trying to train these cattle, I'm, I'm training them to come around me this way. So I'm going to stay right here so that these cattle learn to go by me on the, uh, with the left eye and come around. I can't get my horse to step up in there. There now I can make her. Now that Kurt's got a place to go, I'll just step out of the way and he can get these cattle to flow out. They've been kind of just flowing down the alley, so they have, we've got to change our mindset now to actually we're wanting them to come back the other way. In the first session, we actually just had them coming by all the time and going out the other end. So there is a little bit of training to this that goes on. And uh, now Kurt can bring what works best within that bud box. I think we've got eight head here. I want to bring half of them or so. And it'll stack more than that. And so if you were actually processing cattle any one day, you could certainly bring more cattle than that because your flow is pretty good coming through here. Like I said, the idea is to bring those cattle to the back end of that. These are going to be drawn more back toward their buddies probably than the first group was. I can, you back, what I can back my horse into the corner here. It's way deep. And then right, use his head to control the flow in. Step him back. Step forward. <clears throat> This first little calf that's coming in there, she is, does not move forward as, as well as the rest of them does. I'm gonna actually step down her side to send her forward. We're gonna put a little pressure on it and help create that draw. And now we've got some flow to come forward. But if I had just stood up here on the handle of that, it probably would not have worked very well. So here I can step to her back with this chute Catch it very easy. If I need to work the back gate, I can pop that right here too. Do your processing. Let one go. Close your back gate. Now, the thing I want to do is I want to open this before I let this one go. And that creates my draw coming forward. I'm going to get out of shape here. <laughs> I did. But this is with a self cage head gate, and I can step down here, get her to step forward. She would not get forward enough for me to then have access to the head gate. But as these come forward, I get her processed. I can let her loose, create my draw coming in. 
And do, and what, this is what we're talking about, trying to create flow and draw within a system. The other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to bump that head gate because I don't want them ramming the front of it. Some of these are kind of will come through pretty quick. I like this little chute because you can do these either way of this. I don't know if it'll catch, self catch or not. We'll just see here. Now notice I, I may lay a hand on one like this because that's a little additional pressure. Just figured this out to keep one leg out. And a lot of times we'd just stick them with a hot shot right there to make them jump rather than open it up. Do what you can to get them to come forward. It does take a little coordination going to the direction of handles, by the way. That process right there allows you to keep your flow going. This is something else. If you miss catch one, let them go. You can always bring them back. That's one reason you don't want your shoot setting out in a pasture where you can't get them back. But if they're meant to call, you injure them, them pretty bad. So you want to make sure you let them go, bring them back through. And it's obvious we both need to practice, right? So we just bring it back and do it again. It works because what Kurt's doing in the back and what I'm doing in the front. Now, if you had one more person to help, they would be working this alleyway, the crowd alley coming to the shoot. So they can either be a help or a hindrance. For the most part, you don't have to get up there and do anything. Now, if you're up here talking to the guy running the shoot, you're stopping all your flow probably. So a lot of times this person has to get away or go down the side of the cattle to send them forward. It's the same thing we've been doing out here and getting that flow to continue. I, I actually, Ron, think after watching and thinking about it, I think if you'll run the cattle through once first, whether you have 100 head or 200 head, run them through there once first, then you can process with two people, get rid of this person in the middle and it creates a lot better flow because this person always stops cattle from coming up in for, out of the box. And that's the big challenge, so. Yeah. Even loading trucks, I, I prefer not to have, and I have the hardest time getting truck drivers not to stand in this area right here. They want to stand there and help, and I understand that, but when they come around, they stop my flow coming out of the box, and I can't create momentum to take the cattle on the truck. 